All right, everyone. Welcome back. Another edition of the History Buffs after, on a, uh, after a hiatus. After a, yes, after a brief, after hiatus. brief hiatus. How long uh, have we been on? I don't even. Like yeah, three weeks. Months? A month. We've been up for a while. Yeah. I don't know. I probably... Well, I mean, we needed to we needed to rest after the civil after the civil war. A lot of civil war. You know, we had, we had to do our own reconstruction, battle by battle. <laughs> My goodness. Um, <laughs> so we are we're back, and we're obviously always R. A. Minahan, Ned Snark, Austin from New London. Welcome back, gentlemen. What's going on? Good, Good to, to see you back. all. Good to be Great back. Great to be back. So uh, we're really taking this as a an opportunity to use uh use this snow day snow night uh in new england not so much for ned um no. but to dive deep into one of my favorite topics and call me a history nerd i don't give a shit it's a history buff it's what we do um one of my favorite topics that is the constitution and it's gonna get heated i promise you it's gonna get heated because r is a moron <laughs> um, which we learned at the end of the last episode, which is really the genesis for this whole conversation. So we have to uh, get through some of the some of the background first, and then Ari is going to take his beating. So, uh, gentlemen, excited to be back? Good to be back, or what? Yeah, let's get started. Very excited. Ago was the the anniversary of it being completely ratified? Yep. Mistaken. Yes. Yep. When was that's right? So appropriate, appropriate. It's December thirteenth. I know you're not getting that on uh, on your this day in history calendar, by the way. That's way too happy for that. Man, it was. That's an awesome. Oh, it was. Normally, normally it's, it's just like you know, thirty five thousand Jews exterminated <laughs> on you know Thanksgiving or something like that. Uh, all right, <laughs> not, very, not very good. That's not funny. Share with the, <laughs> share with the audience your funny. December your December seventh. I don't remember what it was. It wasn't even Pearl Harbor. Or something it wasn't Pearl Harbor. Harbor. <laughs> it was Pearl Harbor Day in the corner. It says Pearl Harbor Day. <laughs> Oh, it was something super depressing. I forget what it is. Actually, I can probably. Yeah, Ari's this oh, day it was history. Ari's, like, yeah. December seventh, Pearl Harbor Day, and it had a completely unrelated event to like on December seventh. Yeah, like what? Well, like something worse that happened than, yes. than that. So it says December seventh, Monday. I, underneath it says Pearl Harbor Day. It says the title is nineteen ninety three gunman terrorizes Long Island commuter train. <laughs> yeah, not funny. Not funny at all. But. No. Yep. November 18th, the title was Jim Jones Leads Mass Suicide at Jonestown. There you go. <laughs> that was a great way to good. start my Monday morning. Yep. And a happy good, Monday good. to you. On Election Day, 1979, communists and Klansmen clash in North Carolina, which I thought there was a little go. foreboding. History repeats. And history Who repeats won? itself. I'm pretty sure that happened also in North Carolina this year. Probably. What? What kind of a calendar is this? Is it is it's it like the History Channel? Is it's it purpose? Channel. Is it purposely supposed to be depressing? No, it's just from the History Channel. I don't yeah. have to tell you. <laughs> just history depresses people. Mm. That's every why Monday that's is like the worst thing ever. Like it's just, yeah, they definitely did that ironically. Like they were trying to make it like that. I think I think someone had some fun with it. Well, they probably got sick and tired of writing about Pearl Harbor Day. Like Pearl I know, Harbor, I, I, I can see that kind of, but not really. Like you know. Play the hits, like yeah, exactly. Right. Wasn't, there, wasn't there a happier thing that happened on December seventh? Right, as a great man says, "Don't bore us, get to the chorus." Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so KDL, why don't you lay out what we're going to do here with the? Uh, yeah, so uh, we have a, a few different few different segments we're going to run through. It'll probably be we're going to try to break these episodes up a little bit. So we're going to record pretty much straight through for as long as it takes us, and then uh, we'll pause and then restart and break it up accordingly. Um, so we're going to start with a, a brief background of the Constitution which I think is good to get, get everyone a little bit caught up of where we're going to be. Um, and it starts really a few years earlier with the Articles of Confederation, which not a lot of people have heard of before. And these Articles of Confederation, as good as the Constitution is, all right, um, the Articles of Confederation I'm were guy. that. I'm a huge Constitution guy. Yeah, I can't say enough good things. But I do, I do like the Constitution as a whole. So what the what the Article of Confederation was is essentially a firm league of friendship among states. That's the way I that's the way I was taught with it. That's the way I mm -hmm. teach it. it. It's a yep. firm league of friendship. It's oh, we're all you know we're all our own independent states. We all have our own constitutions at this point, um, and we're going to use a federal government to unite us if needed. But we're basically going to be left alone. And that was great in theory. Just like some other things are great in theory, uh, didn't necessarily work so well within. I won't say within. This was eighteen. Or 1782, 83? 1781 to 1781. 81, yeah. 81, 89, so, correct. So it doesn't even last 10 years, gets ratified in 1781. And you know, they by the time the Constitution comes around at the end of the decade, you have 
widespread uh, widespread riots because the government couldn't do anything. They couldn't rule anything. They couldn't uh, levy taxes. They couldn't even raise a, a military to defend themselves without asking each individual state to give them the military. Um, basically, what it did is it gave states way too much power to do their own thing, which is fine if they're all going to be independent countries, but it doesn't make any sense if you're, if the goal is of this whole thing is to be one you know, United country, United States of America. So it just didn't, it didn't work for the time. It didn't work for the States or the, the country as a whole. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, you know, it is basically just state versus federal, you know, the current constitution, the federal government uh, more or less exists because with the Articles of Confederation, you know, they didn't, they didn't, the federal government, there was no federal court system. The, the, uh, there was a president, I forget how long, they would uh, like it was like the president of the court. senator or the house whatever exactly. it was. Like, yeah, the president of the Congress. right they couldn't raise an army they had to ask states for taxes like there was just no each state had each state had its own currency so that yeah, it was impossible so, they, so the federal government couldn't control commerce you know it was just a super super weak federal government right. because you know when you first start out i mean i guess it makes kind of sense since you know they were they're so used to being their own colonies so i, I guess it's a good transition they were also incredibly fearful of tyranny. They just didn't want the federal government yeah, to have too much power, and they didn't want to have a repeat of, you know, a British monarch over them, but just at home. So, so they, yeah. And no, I was, I was just going to say what was really what's really unique about the whole process is there have been republics previously in history, but the United States is the first country to adopt a constitution to actually frame it out. And, and, and put in, you know, actual support structures and a foundation of how it would work. So even the Articles of Confederation, as weak as they were, weren't a terrible idea. It was just a first step. And luckily, they were able to correct it and then really sit down and formally put together a, a constitution. Because right. it was, it was it, actually, I think it's from, uh, what's the what's the Mel Gibson movie uh, in the Revolutionary the War? The, the Patriot, Patriot, where he says, is, is it better? It, it, it's a really good movie. But is it better to be ruled by... One tyrant, a thousand, you know, three thousand miles away, or you know, thirty tyrants, you know, mm, five hundred yeah. miles away. Yeah, no give some wisdom. Yeah, it only had one good scene. I thought. Sorry, but we should we should do that. I watched break that, down I watched that movie quantum, twice on the Fourth of July. Quantum History Week. Yes, yeah, so we should break down break down. I, I have pretty big issues with the movie Troy, but that's for another. Mm. Right, we we'll too, RA. You got an idea? Blows. All right. Got an idea. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so but we digress. Yes, we digress. <laughs> so less than 10 years after the Articles of Confederation were put into place, you have uh, basically a it was supposed to be a conference to amend the Articles of Confederation. And essentially what happened is everyone came together and were like, this isn't working. Technically, we're not supposed to do this. We're going to do it anyway. We're just going to throw these out and try again. And that's where you get the Constitutional Convention of 1789. 87. 87, ratified in 89? Yeah. Yeah. Well, started uh, right, it was finalized in 90. 1781. No, 91. 1791, I'm sorry. Yeah. 91. In the first election in 92. So, no, late. first election was in 88. Sounds right. I thought it was 88. With he was elected Washington. before it was ratified? Okay, yeah. hold on. Well, no, because they, they had already laid down the groundwork. That's what that's what 1787 was for, yeah. Hey, look, when I was a kid, you guys, I'm way older than you. They had the, uh, you know, um, uh, Kid Rock, whatever it was called. No, uh, Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock. They had the Constitution. In 1787, our founding fathers did agree to establish virtue and establish liberty. Shows how far the the you know that was my history. Because we we probably watched the same things and sure there you go. No, the Schoolhouse Rock, I guess, right? Yeah. Hold on. Uh, go ahead. Watch that in civic because I thought it was I thought it was eighty eight, and then Adams took over in ninety six, and then you had the Virginia dynasty starting in eighteen hundred. Yeah, that's or, correct. Nope. No, then you're right. Nope. Then you're right. Was, nope. Yeah. You're right. So you're Adam, right. yeah, Jefferson was eighteen hundred. Adams yeah. is one term that ended in seventeen ninety nine, eighteen hundred. Yeah. Monroe and then Adams. Yep. So uh, anyway, we already we already did it. By the way, we already just seventeen eighty eight. Yeah. Thank you. I just said that like five minutes ago. I know. Just confirmed it. All right. Right again. Ridiculous. Right again. Right again. Um, right so, again. so they all come together and basically say this isn't working. We need to create a new system to override the new system that they 
put forth after the revolution and really for basic things, for things like to be able to levy taxes, to be able to raise a military. Um, they were, you know, the country was in great debt after the revolution. I had to pay these people back and it was a new country. You need to be able to protect yourself from, you know, potential invasion being taken over again. Um, yeah, like, a a national, like, you know, identity. And you yeah. couldn't just continue as, you know, like I'm a Massachusetts, I'm a Connecticut. Right. I'm a Floridian. You know, you just right, and, and there still is some. There still obviously is regional pride, and we just talked about well, that, an era of yeah, it, massive regional pride. But you know, it, it's it was almost too. It was to the point where states just ignored that. Well, I guess you can say that happens today as well. But you know, it was it, the states didn't even pay any mind to the federal government at all. Right, and back then too, like uh, in up until like right up until the Civil War, many people, especially Southerners, referred to their state as their country. My mm. country, Virginia. You know, my right. country, Georgia. Right. Um, so what eventually gets created is a federal republic, a democ- a, what was it, a representative democracy, not a direct democracy, meaning we elect people and then those people put forward the will of the people, the will of the people that elected them to then go and you know, create laws that best benefit the country or create, you know, whether it's uh, the president or mm-hmm. senator or congressmen, senators, eventually at first Congress senators were appointed, not elected, but um, we'll so we can talk about that amendment probably next episode. Uh, so you get a representative democracy, which is really the first of its kind. Nothing like this has ever been put together before in human history. Nope. Nope. That's it. No, no, no. What was wrong? I Where thought you froze. Wrong? Yeah, uh, no thought at all. <laughs> I thought you froze. <laughs> Jesus, no selling. I was going to say, wasn't Rome in. similar? I mean, there was. Hey, consuls, the, I mean, yeah, like yeah. I mean, not the American Constitution is obviously a great piece of work, but they stole all their ideas well, yes, they from took, other people, <laughs> right? But well, they improved yeah. on them, and they improved on them, but they still took them from a, elsewhere. Write that down. You know. Austin says, "Constitution, great piece of work." Bang, there we go. <laughs> bang, write bang. it down. Austin, awesome Constitution, got noted. Um, Justin, that's the headline for when Stroud. I don't, <laughs> don't think, but it, it, it was different though because it wasn't like there was no executive branch really, unless you're kind of the emperor, and that didn't end great. I mean, it, you could there's clear signs that it wasn't the same as like Rome or. I mean, obviously, Greece to a lesser extent, but right. Thanks, all right. <laughs> thanks, all right. Sure, right. I, I, I'll stand by that till, I, till the day I die. <laughs> and I, and I'm it's a hot take, but I hope you do stand by. It. Some, some people go. here, some people here might not agree. That's okay. We'll talk about that in yeah, a little we'll bit. Talk about that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, how about this? It creates the first of its kind in the modern, you know, the modern era, post Enlightenment era. How about that? It it takes. Examples of governments that worked previously, you can use Rome, for example, incorporates enlightenment principles, uh, you know, uh, you know, life, liberty, property, they change to pursuit of happiness, and, you know, all infuse that into the idea of the Constitution. Is that fair to say? Yeah, but, but okay. keep them, you can even use a more modern example, the Dutch Republic in the, in the late 1700s, by the way, the first country to loan the United States money, two million guilders. Um, they had a they had Republic. Yep, John Adams is there. That's right. But they had there was it, this was um, after or I'm sorry they had strat holders that that ran it uh, from a um, uh, an executive branch type uh, we can refer mm. to that but they were elected the strat holders were elected um, but they didn't they didn't really have a constitution they did have it was an indirect or representative democracy as we were ta- rep- yeah as we were talking about but um, they did not have a constitution and of course that's what led to its un- undoing because they ended up bringing in the king. One of the strat holders became became a constitutional monarchist, but this was that happened after the French Revolution. So the U.S. Right. Was, was pretty unique. Where sure we stole the ideas from uh, John Locke and and mm-hmm. and the, the uh, what was the uh, what was the 1688 revolution in England called? The Glorious okay. Revolution. Glorious Revolution. Thank you, R.A. Um, ironically, a hundred years before Washington's first term of office. But uh, the uh, so we did lift his ideas because he actually wrote out. Um, from that that Jefferson lifted, you know, the pursuit of life, liberty, and property. We right. just changed property for the pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness, yeah. But it was never structured or formalized until until the Constitutional Convention of 1787. Right. Which is really a unique thing. Right. Yeah. So you, go ahead, Austin. No, I was gonna say it, Chad. I agree. Yeah. So this the, the an important point to note, like I was saying, is the fact that it is a you know representative democracy, which 
gives us the federal republic, meaning, you know, we elect people to go to Washington to do, you know, essentially what we elect them to. It's this contract, this, well, really the, the social contract, which I'm, was, no, it wasn't Locke, it was Hobbes, social contract. Thomas Hobbes was a social contract. Yeah. So it, so it creates a social contract between the government and the people, basically. The people, right. You, the, the government gets its right to govern from right. the people. And that's from where the idea the of the people. Yep. Yes. So that's where you get the idea of, you know, by the people, for the people. So basically us electing our representatives gives people the right, or it, we're, we're consenting to them to make rules on our behalf. Is basically the, the process of what gets created, which you know. So I don't feel like a lot of people don't necessarily realize anymore. Like we, I think nowadays it's viewed as you know we elect these people to basically you know be in charge of us, and that's not the intent at all. That's not what it was designed that's for. Not the intent, but I mean, it's kind of what happened. You know, they can sit there and they can tell us whatever they want for our vote, and then they just do whatever they want. Congress doesn't really matter. Well, we see. I mean, we see with the COVID lockdown. We see, you know. Like, you know, Newsom saying, you know, stay inside, don't do this, and he goes to part of we. There, there's examples of it, definitely. But, but that's the, intent, the states. That's the states versus the federal. There's been no federal mandate on, let's say, COVID vaccines because he doesn't have right. the, the government doesn't have that power. Mm -hmm. Right. They, oh, we will. We will cover that. We oh, will yeah. get the state versus federal. Don't you worry. Oh, yeah. But I'm. But I, but I think it's like the. I mean, Hobbes wrote. Um, we'll the, buy them. the governors can't govern without the consent of the governed. You know, so. The way it is, is it's supposed to be a bottom-up process. And when that process fails, it's the right of the people to throw out the governors and right. establish a new government. It, no, it's not the right. It's the – it's the. He, he used a different term. It wasn't – it's the – it's like the obligation, right? yeah, I think. Obligation. The obligation of the people to yep. – like, it's not their right. It's not like, oh, they can do this. It's no, they, they should do this. They, they are yes, obligated to do exactly. this if the government isn't doing what, you know – if they're not, if the government isn't holding up their end of the the bargain, and Correct. it also puts more more onus on the people themselves because for the you know this is arguably actually I don't even know if it's arguable the most responsibility that an electorate has had in, in human history yeah. in terms of everything that gets elected in terms of the you know the uh, in theory the amount of voice it should give the people. Now, can you imagine how frightening that must have been to like the European crowns, and and oh, and, yeah. how, and how inspiring it must have been to the people. Well, we saw how frightening it was with the French Revolution. The French Revolution, yeah, right, which followed right away. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which was also brought about by them helping spend all their money that they didn't have on us, you know, defeating the British. Mm -hmm. well, we don't have to talk about that part, but no, <clears throat> we won't go into that. I feel, like, so, I feel like we already covered that. Yes. Yeah, we did. Um, so this leads us into the basically the the creation of this new government. It, it gives the federal government a lot more power than they had under the Articles of Confederation, but it still puts in, you know, massive amounts of checks and balances. Uh, and the biggest way it did that was it were the three branches of government. You got the judicial, which is Supreme Court, federal judges, uh, executive with the president, and eventually the you know federal agencies, the president's cabinet. You know, all of which is not written into the Constitution. That's some could argue executive overreach. Some would say it's within their right. Um, because with a loose interpretation of the Constitution, either way, it's there now. Uh, and you have the legislative with the uh, Congress and Senate. Bye. So, um, all right, what is your favorite of the three branches of government? Why? I guess the judicial. Jud okay. Is there is there a reason behind that? Well, I just like like the judicial branch. I don't know. I feel like it's the most just of the three. You know, your your least amount to have like corruption. Like I don't think you can lobby federal judges. I feel like like private corporations and mm -hmm. uh, the like can't, you know, really buy. I mean, not anymore, I guess, buy judges, but I feel like it's the most on you know, on on the level. Now, that's actually a good a good point though because you don't every a lot of, you know, obviously the legislative branch is falling into, you know, just basically lot, you know, mouthpieces all, for lobbyists, but you don't see it in the in the yeah. What's that? I, I, I have an oligarchy at this point where you just have a couple of like super special interest groups kind of pulling the strings for, you know, the legislature. You, know, you can you can literally buy politicians at this point. Yep. Yeah. Buy legally, elections you can too. Literally buy politicians. With, with like advertising and stuff. The you know, you see the amount of money that's spent just on advertising alone, not even not even influencing policy once they're in, just to get them elected, you see the money being Exactly. Out. And then who and you know, when when it comes time for a crucial vote, who who do you think comes knocking on their door being like, Hey, remember who got you elected? Yep. Right. 
So awesome. I'm, you're going to say something? Yeah, I'm not sure I entirely agree with R. I was saying that they're the. I mean, like it, they probably are the most on the level, but I feel like the judicial branch has way too much power now than it used to. I feel like a lot of the judges that have been voted in, I don't know, maybe the last few decades, are using a lot more uh, interpretation of the Constitution using like a uh, the constitution or constitutional activism. You know, they're they're trying to push forward a lot of policy, like uh, ideology ideas that they agree with through the Supreme Court, which I don't agree with. Do you have example? Like, what will be an example of that? Uh, I mean, the example of that would be uh, like Roe v. Wade and uh, legalizing gay marriage. I think that would be, or their decision on gay marriage would be another one. So you're anti-gay marriage. I'm not saying I'm anti-gay marriage, but I'm not I, right into that one. I'm not anti-gay marriage. You're anti Roe v. Wade and anti-gay yeah. marriage. That's no, fine. but but what I am saying is that, is that yeah. 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 anti-women's I, rights. I, yeah. I would I rather. I agree more with strict interpretation of the Constitution. If it doesn't say that it's in the Constitution, that's not what the that's not what the judicial branch is supposed to do. They're supposed to say whether or not it's constitutional, whether or not it's uh, you know these what they're whether uh, not the Constitution says that. And I think if it doesn't, then it should go down to states. But what wasn't it the wasn't the rationale for some like gay marriage? The they were saying it's unconstitutional to restrict someone's ability to. To marry, so wasn't that their argument, though? I don't remember. So, like, they were ruling in a, they were ruling that whether it be a constitutional, constitutional or not, right? Correct. But I think the argument, if I'm not mistaken, was that there was no, like, there's no like federal law passed saying mm -hmm. anyone can marry anyone, for example. And then that went to the Supreme Court, and then they were like, "Yeah, that's true. You can do that." It was basically the Supreme Court got brought a, a case that wasn't necessarily around that, and then. They kind of morphed it into constitutional versus not. I, I didn't think it was a federal case, uh, federal. There, I don't think there was any federal legislation that was brought to the Supreme Court, right? It was, it was a like a private court case or something. That's what I thought. I, I thought so too. I'm not entirely sure. So I, I can see your. I, I guess I can see your argument, but um, I don't know. They technically they did rule on the constitutionality of of the mm -hmm. law or not, right? You know? that's all they're supposed to do, right? So right. I, I and I kind of agree with Austin, but I d definitely agree with RA. It's the judicial branch is my favorite. If I could pick a job, you know, I'd love to be a Supreme Court justice. So that would be appointment lifetime, baby. Nice. And, and by the way, RA, even if they changed it to like seventy-five mandatory retirement, I'd still take it. Should be sixty-five. It's, you you or sixty-five, sure, with full I benefit. Think Massachusetts full. actually the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court the mandatory retirement age is seventy, which is uh, we're idea. living longer, so. But hey, with the with the federal bennies, I mean, you can live, you could be oh, fine. Pretty. Yeah. Pretty. Everyone's going to socialize healthcare until you look at your politicians and be like, oh well, you know, what's his face? Paul Ryan was, uh, you know, advocating to dismantle Social Security, but he's got a pretty sweet six figure pension that we're paying yeah. for, which is not a Congress. So it's mm -hmm. you know, it's convenient to say one thing while you're in office, but when you're sitting there collecting, like I said, a six figure pension, socialism doesn't look that bad, right? But I, I love the, the judicial branch more than any other because they are cut off from the, the people, which is which is the legislative branch. And, and they've remained cut off, too, which I think is, yep. is something I, I honestly I haven't thought of too much before. But looking back, it, it is pretty impressive that they, they still do remain you know, it's, unobjective. It's, it's the state essential. They don't clap all that. And right. That's correct. I mean, and if you look at this, this election, you know, everything's become so partisan. But the fact that the Supreme Court wouldn't even like take the case of Trump, you know, uh, pretty much stayed away from Texas, but Texas, Texas and yeah, the, the twenty others or nineteen others. Entertain it, and you know, he appointed two of the judges, three, three of them, judges. three of the three, three of them. them. So, so you know, they even in the most partisan time and since the Civil War, you know, they're still able to look past partisan and just be like, all right, this is wrong. Because they, it's just how they strictly interpret their view of the Constitution. So Scalia was a strict constitutionalist. Like he didn't believe in, right. He didn't believe in any type of, of you know, active. Uh, the, he didn't believe, and this is interesting because when I was taking like law class, constitutional law class in college, I was at the time I believed in like the the Constitution is a living document based on the amendment changes that it's it's changing and evolving all the time since 1789. It's one of the beautiful things about it. Yep. But then after reading like Scalia, it's said like, no, 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 it's not a living document at all. It is written the way it is written for a purpose it can be amended from time to time, but there is a reason why it's, it's like that. And I've come that way as an adult, you know, uh, seeing it more of a, 
not a strict, I mean, I want to be a strict interpretationist, but mm -hmm. seeing it like, let's keep it as, as close to the original constitution as possible. And that's what Amy, Amy Coney Barrett thinks right now. Like yep. She was a disciple yeah. of Scalia. And some, and he's the one that came up with the executive. She's a clerk uh, for him. Yeah, the executive, unit, the unitary executive theory, where it's just like the, the president can do whatever he wants because he's the president. Like he's above the law pretty much. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, Trump appointed her, I feel like, for that reason. But, you know, with Biden as a president, you know, and he's maybe he'll write a bunch of executive orders that no one will be able to contest. It, it's possible. But I do. Um, I also think, too, that what, what, what we people like the, maybe KDL, you teach your kids, but uh, that this, the country was pretty much founded by lawyers who worshipped the law. Yep. They thought the law, what they saw was lacking in England or in Europe. They wanted to perfect in in this new country, and it was going to be done by the rule of law. So the original, um, the the what was it? What were they called? The, the Constitutional Congress men who were putting together this uh, mm -hmm. Constitution. Most of them were lawyers. Um, of course, Washington was the president of the of the convention, right? And the story was that Washington showed up every day in his uniform, not in his not in a suit, in his uniform, oh. and sat at the at the table above the others presiding over the hearings pretty much modeling himself as guess who should be your first president yeah <laughs> this guy you know um and, and by the way it won over a lot of people um but we have to keep in mind that we were founded on laws and whether we hate or love lawyers now which is completely debatable and i hate them too but we are a country of of litigation we are a country of lawyers and we were founded right. that way so I love I love the the, the uh, Supreme Court. I think it's the coolest branch. The, the cool the robes are awesome. Yeah, so well, and, you, are and they don't have to wear the wigs like they do. And uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know Minahan hates Minahan always ridicules them, but I'm like, this fucking robes are bitching, man. You can wear anything you want underneath, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, or I'm not right. Yeah. <laughs> I think I kind of agree, though. I think I kind of agree. Like the 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 judicial branches stayed. At least out of the fray, where it seems everything else becomes so, you know, partisan. So, um, you know, gridlock. Like the honestly, it seems like the best case scenario nowadays with you know a new a new Congress or a new president or you know a new election cycle is gridlock. Yeah, because it almost seems like the alternatives on on both sides could be worse. And also, to what mm -hmm. I also uh, Twitter is a cesspool, as we all know. Yeah. But I'm always very. Uh, almost disdainful i don't even take them serious if i see it on the left or the right where they crack on uh the the supreme court for being political one way or the other you know i saw that the right wing was were, went fucking mental when uh they shot they down nine to passes. nothing i think it was seven to two but seven i two. think it was nine to nine and i think it was it yeah, was, it was seven uh, to two thomas and but even the, and yeah. um i forgot his name now uh alito Alita, even they didn't yeah. fucking like it. They it didn't wasn't like even, say, it yeah. wasn't even any yeah, it was just their interpret they weren't doing it for political reasons. They were saying, Hey, yeah, he you know, the constitution says basically the constitution says they're they're allowed to bring this court this case to us. And what that what their ruling was in this matter was the nine of us say you have no chance of getting into the, this getting this argument into the house. But uh Alito and Thomas said, But we'll let you come to the front door. To tell you, you can't come in the fucking house. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was right. pretty much. It was pretty much nine. It, it was. A, it was a smackdown. Yeah. It was. A, and on the right, they went crazy, mm -hmm. slamming them for like, oh, not standing up. It's like fuck you. And on the left, they do it every time they vote against what the left wants. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they, right. they, you know, they, I hate. The, I just. Man, they need to be the way they are. I love the way. Yeah. They like Citizens United. Yep. Left's going nuts. That's a better example of judicial activism. And it's it's one thing to. It, I was gonna say it's also one thing to disagree with, like the decision, but it's another thing to question the integrity of the court. Because I feel like when you start doing that, just like when you question the integrity of everything else, like like you see in the media, everywhere now, right? Yeah. Once you start to question the integrity of an institution, then that's where the issues come in, mm -hmm. right? right? So if you question the integrity of the court, then you have you know you might not agree with the decision, but I, I feel like I don't know. I think we were all sound like on the same page, or that shouldn't be it shouldn't be touched. Like we we need that for. <laughs> For the country, for the laws, for people to believe in the laws, right? Yeah. And I just see the other two branches of government as you come in, serve your time, and get rich. They yeah. all come in poor and they all leave rich. That's what it seems like. The, yeah. I mean, that's I, I, yeah, I, it's I, sad I, that I, the the one guy who I guess hasn't really tried to do that was already rich in the past. 
you know, Correct. modern times. He was already rich, so he he didn't need it. And I've seen right. seen the you've seen what's what's resulted of that. So yeah, I saw that graphic of well, it was uh, I think it was it was uh, went from Clinton all the way up to Trump and their net worth before and after their presidencies. Yeah. And it's insane it's how much insane. money they end up making off of that. Uh, speaking tours and stuff like that. And you do oh, you know, half a million dollars per, per Kirk, Kirk has talked about how much the Clintons yeah. make off of exactly, uh, their yeah. speaking tours. And well, even like well, Steve was saying, like you sell, you know, you get like millions of dollars of advances for this book that no mm -hmm. one's going to read. But mm -hmm. because it's from a former president, every library, every, you know, every school always like they'll buy yeah. a copy. So, you know, mm -hmm. you have guaranteed. They beef you know, up the sales. Right. Yeah. And even um, like like with the charitable, like everyone starts a foundation, and then you yep. can just write off the uh, what, the administrative costs. Yep. Yep. And just you funnel money in off. and right. Exactly. Clinton Foundation. And then right. there are yeah. people who like you know will come out of politics and they go into like lobbying. Mm -hmm. and it's just it's, I'm I'm not a fan of lobbyists. No, no I am no. definitely not a fan of lobbyists. Not the lobbyists and bureaucracy are the worst things to be created since the worst i'd say the two worst things the constitution allowed honestly bureaucracy Correct. yeah the the, the nameless faceless people behind not even politicians but like in federal agencies that don't Correct. get elected but they're the, the policy makers because the a, new, a new group a new group comes in and they don't know what they're doing like for example okay here's a good example ben carson a former neurosurgeon gets appointed to the head of hud yeah he comes I mean, in i mean he might have some background he's a smart guy obviously but he, you know, I'm assuming he doesn't know as much about that stuff, and he's going to defer to people who have been working at HUD for Correct. years and years. So really, he's not. Even though he got appointed by the president, he's not really calling the shots. It's a bureaucracy that hasn't been elected or hasn't been appointed by someone that's been Correct. elected that's been running this that's, that's been running the same show for years. It's even who just got uh, uh, Budicic just got pr uh, appointed to Secretary of Transportation. Budicic. Yeah. Uh, does he have experience like running transportation? No. I'm pretty sure he was, right. a, you know, an army vet and then a, uh, yep. a, a game mayor. Yeah. Like he's um, a, he's a talented individual, but I don't know why. He's smart. He... No doubt he's bright. He's talented, but I, does he really know a whole lot about transportation? Yeah. Well, the same thing I was saying with, with Ben Carson. Exactly. You know, I, exactly I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, you know, Carson, the, the... he would have been a good surgeon general. And, but and, 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 Leader HUD, that's something he has known nothing about. Like, I, right. Yeah, and, I'm, and, I'm, when I think of bureaucracy, I think more of just like the levels of government. Like, you got to go through X to Y to Z to get anything done. Okay. That's well, you don't I think those are the, you don't think those are a disaster either. That's, it's an absolute disaster, but I, I just don't think of it as like the people behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, but I think, cool. go ahead. I, I think KDL's, to KDL's point, uh, all right. Yep. We hate that too, but I think it's those people in that, uh, those unelected officials behind the scenes behind the curtain that are making yeah, setting up either, those levels yeah. i mean we all know we're, we've all studied history right we all know like the state department since the late eight, 1800s early 1900s have been always from the the most wealthy class it was a very prestigious job to get into the state department mm -hmm. and that cadre of wealthy east coast moneyed protestant elites pretty much ran the, the U.S. State Department uh, probably until like the 50s and 60s when, it, when they kind of dismantled that hierarchy and that old that old guard. You can say they dismantled it, but then the CIA mm -hmm. base of the CIA was created. That's correct. When the when the game changed and the military after industrial World complex. War II, I mean, it was, if you, want to, if you really want to dig down to it, it was that department that withheld uh, uh, visas and access to U.S. shores for Jews leaving Europe. They turned away a ship right here in Miami that ended up going back to Lyon, France, captured by the Germans, and they all went to a concentration camp because the anti-Semitism within the State Department, not at the Secretary of State, although he may have been, um, but that that layered uh, bureaucracy of moneyed elite that's been occupying those jobs for probably 60 years before that. So, yeah, it's it's you need to blow it all up, I think. You need to really start from scratch. So Ned wants to abolish the Constitution. No, what I want to no do doubt. is I want to abolish the the bureaucracy and the layers of of uh, the federal agencies, especially. Yeah, absolutely. The Constitution allows that, though. Well, and the biggest so it again, does allow that. Going back to the Constitution, mean you have, if it allows it, doesn't mean you have to do it. Going going back to the Constitution, what, I mean, what we're all talking about now is the the executive agencies, and really, I'd call executive overreach with all the different presidential cabinet positions and all that. It says it's I believe it says the president may appoint his cabinet. Mm -hmm. Right. It says that in the Constitution, part, part of the executive powers, president may appoint his cabinet. It doesn't say 
that cabinet member gets its own, you know, street address in Washington, you know, in, in so Washington. Can you and, more cabinets? Yes. Like, you can just be like, all right, I want the, the you know, secretary of drywall. Yeah. You need it. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't, it. My, my, I don't believe that's the case at all. I don't know about that. I think he needs a secretary of flooring and framing. Yeah, <laughs> flooring and plumbing. Definitely. <clears throat> but yeah, you can just create new, like there's no, you need a part of the president's cabinet is HUD and part of the president's cabinet is secretary of education. It doesn't say that, it just says the president may appoint its own cabinet. And he can also dismantle them too. Right. If he wanted to, I mean, I mean, Trump could have gotten, I, one of the things I disagree with him on, among other things, is the his handling of the interior. He could have dismantled the secretary, the uh, department of the interior. Easy. Mm -hmm. Done. And that's what people don't realize is the, largest, like commerce, you know? the largest of the three branches, is the executive branch, Yes. just because all the executive agencies, and it's really not even close. I mean, FBI, NSA, that's, those are all executive agencies. Yeah. And most like, of those came about in the, in the Roosevelt, uh, the second Roosevelt um, mm -hmm. administration. His, his alphabet soup. Yep. Right. Correct. And so you so have when do, we get, when do we get to state and federal? I was, I was just going to transition there. So we've talked plenty about, uh, I think the best recent example of checks and balances, I think, is the election. The The executive branch has a dispute with, you know, a, the way a process laid out in the Constitution went. So they brought it forward in front of the judicial, and the judicial told them to go screw. Yep. I mean, that's checks and balance. Obviously, we know the president can veto the, the legislature. Brand, the legislator, it can be overridden. It can be, you know, once the law is passed, it's challenged in the, in the Supreme Court, which we talked a little bit. We know that. If you don't know that, no, no, go yeah. go back to go watch something else. Yeah, go, exactly. If you don't know that, you're probably not watching. Watch that. anal. That's a good point. <laughs> yes. Yes. Did you find Latino Kurt? By the way, is he alive? Yeah, he is alive. He overslept. He got he didn't up get for reported. A, no. Pull the he had a okay. four a.m. call yesterday morning with India, and that kind of wiped out his whole day. So he said he, he uh -huh. went. He laid down at six p.m. last night and didn't wake up until five o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. But like, he's not in. He's not in ISIS. Four? Come on. Uh -huh. What was that? Just because he got up at four. Actually, he had a call at four. He had to get so he up at three forty-five. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Roll that to bed and pick his phone up. Yeah. Um, what? All right. So yeah, let's do it. Let's get to states, and I know where I want to take this, but let's get to federal versus states. So the and we're going to do amendments a little later, but the tenth amendment of the Constitution, the last amendment in the Bill of Rights, which was the original, you know, list of amendments when the Constitution was ratified. The Tenth Amendment says all rights not explicitly granted to the federal government are here, you know, basically default to the states. The states have all the other rights. So you have a stronger federal government, three branches, you know, representative democracy. They can uh, wage war, levy taxes, all this stuff. But everything that it still says, everything that they're not allowed, everything that we didn't say they could do, right, goes to you, the state, meaning Correct. you, the states. So that's where you get into this whole state versus federal. Obviously, we just talked about the best example of that being the Civil War, where you had secession and you know states' rights. The states were arguing, you're, you know, you're violating our state rights, state constitutions, and obviously we talked about what that led to. Um, what other what other examples do we have of that? Uh, Ned, you had a few, didn't you, for well, state the, versus federal? The uh, so so when the Constitution was formed, that was the big fear was tyranny, a centralized tyranny, right? So Alexander Hamilton was writing the, the, the Federalist Papers, and he was a big advocate for a, uh, a strong central federal government, a small but strong did, federal didn't, government. Didn't he advocate for the president to serve a life term when he, when they were I first think, drafted? When they were first drafted, yeah, they didn't like that very much. Now, Jefferson was not there. Jefferson was our ambassador to, to France. France at the time. France, yeah. So, and this is right up to the French Revolution too, right? So he's there at a very dangerous time. But he's seeing the end of the ancient regime, and and he's sending he's seeing the corruption what's going on there on a on an absolute monarchy. So he's sending Madison and Monroe and his his uh, his um, uh, Virginia his, his, Yeah, like hey, you know, I know you guys are sitting in this in this uh, constitutional Congress. We cannot have a strong federal government. That's tyranny. So we need strong states' rights. He, I don't agree with Jefferson and a lot of things, but I don't disagree with this as as much as other stuff. So the the article Article Ten was put in there because they had just reached the limit of their okay. We've got enough bills of rights. We have enough constitutional amendments, one through nine. You know what? We're good. That's it. 
Number 10, yeah. anything else that's not named up here, it's ours. So yeah, that, the, was their, that was their the constitution. The constitution the, the, isn't long. It's right. not very long. You could read it in one sitting. I mean, it's not. You could go read it. You could go read it and probably finish by the time you're done watching this. So if you start from the beginning, I mean, it's, it's not. great. Yeah. And it's a beautiful. I mean, I hate to I sound like a fucking flag waver, but when you read it out loud, you know, we the people, the United States of America, uh, assemble. A, what I used to know it by. I used to know the preamble by heart. In order, uh, for, uh, in order to form a perfect, perfect union, union establish a domestic and then to establish domestic tranquility in, uh, to sure, ourselves, ensure sure justice. justice, justice, justice. justice. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it's fucking great. You read it, it's like, Jesus, what a great fucking document. I, by the way, Jefferson did with Jefferson. People also convolute that Jefferson wrote this. No, he didn't write this. He was in France. I don't yeah. even know who really wrote this. It's Madison, I think, is oh, credited. Was Madison. Oh, it Madison credit yeah. Yeah, the preamble? Madison is credited with most of it. And I I said it earlier. I'll say it again. Great document. It's a great. <laughs> no, no, you said no. Hold on, you wrote great work. It is great work. <laughs> it's a great, great work. Great work. Great work. It is. The, uh, so, uh, so that was because that the, you know that those nine first articles satisfied those states that had already gone through the difficult time of the Articles of Confederation and seeing that it didn't work, but they weren't ready to bend the knee to a federal government in New York or in Washington, where it was going to be. The other thing too, was the only reason why that was ratified, or I should say passed by the, out of the, um, out of the Congress was because they decided to put the, um, the, the discussion of slavery off the table until 1808. Right. So they gave themselves, what they did was they kicked the can down the road 20 years for their sons to, to figure out which kind of sucked. They should have solved it right then and there. But the argument is, had they tried to say, you know what, no freaking slavery, they wouldn't have been able to have a constitution or a United States or a United States. Maybe it would have been called something else, a federated states. But so that was bullshit. But uh, the 10th the Amendment kind of covered all their states' rights butts. That's what they felt. Right. Yeah, because I mean, if you're reading it, if you're, you know, someone has to ratify this thing from – you know, pick your state, you read it and say, oh, I mean, okay, I can agree with most of the stuff up here. Okay, it's saying what the government can do, taxes, yep. all right. Oh, it says some stuff they can't do, like unreasonable search and seizures or, you know, trial, but like, you know, rights to face your accuser, all that stuff. It lays it all out. Okay, I can get behind that. And then at the end, it's a little, you know, a little cherry on top where it says, oh, and everything that's really not mentioned above, you guys figure out. Yours. You guys got it. And it's, it sounds nerdy again. Don't care. One of my favorite <laughs> things about it is how it allows for different states to be different. Yep, exactly. And you see it in, obviously, culture is a big part of it, but you see it in um, when you recently with the COVID lockdowns, you see it, people fleeing states like California, moving to Texas or economic reasons, even same thing. I mean, you have companies, you know, companies that have left Connecticut over the years, right? Going to find better places, hopefully every, in the country. But Every, you know, every company left Connecticut. Right. And so, yeah. so you yeah. see it, and it's it, it's proof that it works. Yeah, it, it gives the people choice. It's not one set. You know, here's the but, um, it's, but here's but the KDL, standard. It's, it's under threat too, because you now have uh, standards for nationalization, where you they uh, the, you can the argument of, of a, an, a too strong a federal government, which I think the government the federal government is too strong at this point, mm -hmm. where they want to flatten the curve, though, so there is no. New England cultural things or right. mid upper Midwest cultural things or the Southwest, you know, no, no, no. We want everyone to be exactly the same. And that's bullshit. It's wrong. We're different yeah. people. We're a huge country. Uh, even, you know, logistically it takes three days to cross the country by truck four. So uh, how can you, how can someone in Washington state know how, what, what I think about things in Florida? You know, that's an interesting point. Some some would argue for things like national elections. Things People would argue stuff <laughs> stuff like that. That's a really good point, Ned. I just wanted to say that. Uh, Austin, you were going to say something? I was going to say, like, the temptation to try to increase the federal power, I think, has been increased in the last several decades because of the increase in technology. I think our ability to communicate, I mean, even if it's just through social media and, whatnot, and email and everything like that, allows – for things to be a lot more level across the country, even if you know there are major cultural differences, like Ned sure. was saying, which I completely agree with. And I agree with everything you said, Ned, but I think that technology, the increase in uh, you know technology has really contributed to the fact that people want uh, more federal power. 
It's just yeah. easier. Yeah. Well, let's look at it this way. You guys, you guys all live in the Northeast in New England. What's your What's your impression of Georgia? Where they're having an election that's going to probably decide how, what, how this country is going to move forward for the next right. few years. They're all rednecks, right? <laughs> they're all right. That's right. <laughs> they're all KKK. Well, what happens when they're going to vote in? You know, have uh, two two blue senators in a blue right. state, which Austin thinks isn't going to happen. By the way, I bet him this past weekend twenty bucks that. I no, it. it was fifty. Oh, I'm absolutely, well, it's good. Happen. It was well, that's 50. fine. Good, I have more money they're for gonna, me. That's fine. No, they're going. If they're going to, they're going to be Democrat. They're going to be absolutely. Democrat. They're going to win. Yeah, absolutely. Goodbye, yeah. student debt. Goodbye, mm-hmm. student. But I already, I already I paid, paid my off. We're, we're gonna, gonna, gonna watch all the board. All right, last night. Too. Can I get? Can I get credit? Can I get store credit or something? I already paid mine off. Oof, oh yeah. Bad. Oh no! Now you got to pay off Austin's. That's how it works. Well, his is paid off. Trust me. Oh, his, is, his is plenty not my, off. Not, not my grad school. Really, he should he should be paying for he should have been paying for my education. And I, I've things. had no grad school debt, but I've got undergrad debt, so I'm looking forward to this. I had very little debt <laughs> when I got out of school, so I was lucky. Yeah, or he just keeps deferring it to next. No, no, keep pushing. Yeah, COVID, it COVID, okay, man. Like you don't have to. There's no interest, but you can make payments if you want. I'm like, no thanks. <laughs> I've got a feeling something's gonna happen, so. Are yep. there any other uh, any other federal versus state examples you want to? Get? I mean, there's no, I I know real example. I just I just like the whole the idea of it states being different but still being under the same. You know, that's why I don't I don't like things like um like they did like nationalizing healthcare. Yeah, I don't like it because I don't trust the federal government to run it. It's not that I don't think yeah. people should have basic uh, you know be basic great shape and access to medical care. Tried that. There, yep. like there are certain things like someone with diabetes shouldn't. Like and can't afford their insulin, they should be able to get yep. their insulin. But like, there are horror stories coming out of like Canada where they have socialized medicine. People who have money will come down to the United States to get like a knee replacement because they don't trust the Correct. healthcare system up right. there to perform a good not, surgery. And it's not that our system is bad. It, the, it's not that our system is is bad compared to socialized medicine. Our system is bad because of the corruption, because of the big pharma and, oh, and how they insurance. Yeah, it's, 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 it's insurance companies are allowed yeah. to like regulate the prices. My dad goes into he's he's on he's on uh, he's on Medicare. He goes and he said he just the other night he was telling me he went in for an estimate on a procedure and it it, they, it was twenty seven hundred dollars. Medicare said we're paying seventy five dollars, and they said okay, we're writing off the difference. So why would the, why was there twenty seven hundred dollar charge to begin with? Mm-hmm. So is that what you would Austin? If you were going for the same procedure, you don't have Medicare. Is that what you would have to pay or it's bullshit? Mm-hmm. So the system just needs to be tweaked and, rev- and revived. Yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right. right. Same thing with, listen, the same thing you could say with, with a woman's right to choose. Should it be a federal law that a woman in um, in Iowa who has nothing to do with a woman in California or a woman in South Carolina? What if what if the in what if the culture in that area is different? And they're like, you know, we don't believe that. The woman can just drive. It's not that difficult. Drive to another state and have it done. Mm-hmm. Why is it a federal law? To set that or moral at the morality. same time, the woman in whatever rural example you just gave doesn't have to have an abortion. You know, right? Yeah. Like yeah. they can choose to or choose. Not yes, I, I, I'm more. more I'm more of that camp as well. Yeah. You give people an option. You know, like the, the same way that that woman can drive across the border, that other lady can just not have an abortion. And I, what if she's pressured to have one? So I, they are. I mean, I've got a clinic. All right, right, if, right if they here. are, then. The, that's on them. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of our. I'm saying is it should be more I'm left more to like, the I, states. I don't, to think, I don't think the federal government should be telling me to not do stuff. They should be able mm-hmm. to be like, hey, like you can do this, but you do, again, you don't have to. Like it's not someone's putting a gun in your head, like, hey, get an abortion. That's not well, what Roe v. Wade says. It's just like you, it's it's legal. Well, what what I'm saying is the federal government should can has every right to say it, you can do it if you wish to, but the state can say we don't want you to do it here. All right. That's uh, yeah. Because the federal the federal government is like the minimum standard for it. Like like COVID, for example. Yeah. No, there, there's not a lot of federal like you know mandates for masks and stuff like that. You you have to follow what the federal Correct. government says, but you can like escalate that. Right. Which is fine if the state wants to do that. You know, go for it. But I don't think it's the federal government's role to be like, no, you can't have an abortion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, and but but I don't think it's the federal government's place to be like, hey, like you can't right. get married. But, but, but yeah, but the, the flip state side of Rhode Island, the state of Connecticut can't say, you know what? The government says that you're you are you you can have an abortion, but in Connecticut, we think differently. So by a majority of our people, by the consent of the people, we voted that you know what, you can't have an abortion in, in, in Connecticut. 
That can't right, happen. That, 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 that but, sounds like a Connecticut problem. That doesn't sound like a federal government problem. No, but I'm federal saying, but there's not a, do whatever you you can do either or. You know, Connecticut's not, not allowed to do that though. Connecticut won't be so, allowed to do again, that. Again, yeah. that's a Connecticut problem. So, but but all right, what, what Ned? But what Ned's saying is that you. He, I hear what you're saying. Where a government should be telling us to do anything, it shouldn't be pro. But yep. what, what he's saying is, it that. shouldn't be. It shouldn't be the government saying you can't allow this to happen. Whether it's pro or against something like gay marriage, abortion, pick your you know third rail topic. Right. Like he's saying, it's it's not whether it's the government saying anyone can do it or it's the government saying no one can do it. Both right. are bad. That's Correct. that's what that's what you're both arguing. But, but if my argument about the RA is like, yeah, I know I actually agree with you that the federal government should not put a restriction on something like that at all. But if you're in Idaho and you want to put a restriction on it as a state, you should have the right to say, you know what. You can do it across the U.S., but you can't do it here by the consent of the people of the governed. And, that, and that's uh, that's what this, like I just said, you know, you can amp it up, but you have. Yeah, but you called it a problem, a Connecticut problem. It's like so it is it's a, not it a is, problem. It's, that's an Idaho it's not, problem. It's not a problem. I mean, like it's an issue, but like it's it's their responsibility, as in like an Idaho problem, as an exactly. Idaho responsibility. It's, a, it's their responsibility, exactly. That's not, yeah. And if, if they want to do that and vote that in, hey, but they can't. It. What I'm saying now is though they can't, right? Can they? I, I, I don't think. Well, I don't the, really well but that's 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 argument though is because of the let's say like take the Supreme Court ruling on gay marriage because of that ruling now states can't decide and uh, I think we'll probably exactly. agree that Correct. any state who would like outlaw gay marriage probably isn't going to be ridiculed across the board. In my opinion, they should be. But what Ned's saying is the fact that they don't have the ability to make that decision is an issue. Correct. Correct. Because they're just I, trying to I, make I, every- I just think you shouldn't be telling people like you can't do things. But but the flip side is you shouldn't be telling people they can't say you can do everything like, either. That's fine. Right. But I, okay, that's I, I understand your side of it, but I personally think that it's like a personal choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 no, I agree. That we already we agree. That that means yeah, that's I think you guys are saying like almost the same exact thing. Just yeah, they are. I know. Just, which I'm right. right. <laughs> RA was attacking Connecticut, and I stood up for you guys. Well, I appreciate that, Ned. I do. But it deserves to be attacked, Ned. Okay. It, it, I agree. With, I also agree with that. Oh, all right. Okay. I went to school in New, New Haven area for like a, a semester or two, and I got out of there real quick because yeah, not, not a great spot. Damn, you went very, to win, yeah. it's a very win. poorly run state. Very, very poorly run state. We had, what was it? Uh, Daniel Malloy was the worst ranked uh, governor in the entire country. And then we elected Ned Lamont, who had the same exact platform. Nice. Like, sure, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do this again. Let's Poor Connecticut, again. though, it doesn't know if it's new. It wants to be New York, but it's stuck in New England. No, it wants yeah. to just suckle. It wants to just suckle the uh, the income out of New York City as yeah. much as it can. That's that's it only cares about Fairfield County. That's where that's where Fairfield mm. County, the insurance companies in Hartford. That's what it cares. About. Yeah, yep. Darien down there. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. Do we want to do the? Do we want to do the electoral college now? No, I think we we cut it here. Cut it here. <laughs> All right, needs uh, to replenish. Wow, he's just right, avoiding we're gonna, this. We're gonna, we're gonna he's, he's, he's under he's out. under quarantine. He's got a COVID test. He's waiting for the results. He's a little nervous. He needs a break. I got that good. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna tick you guys a little bit next week. We're starting hot with the electoral college. You won't want to miss. You won't want to miss it. You History won't buffs, want to miss it. Out. Like. <laughs>